okay, so we just left um, the video at the point in which we saw blue and red being torn apart. So that's what we're going to be writing about today. We're going to begin from where we left off yesterday. Oh, don't know if something happened to the video then. Um, we're going to begin where we left off yesterday. And where was that? That was at the point where we thought that Blue finally might be plucking up the courage to speak, to say something to Red, this, this beautiful red umbrella that he's just bumped into. So we're looking at including dialogue, precise verb, a precise verb and a prepositional phrase in our writing today. So can you remember dialogue, what that means? I've just given you a small clue. Dialogue, we thought about it in Monday's lesson. Yes, okay, so speech. So we're thinking he's just building up the courage. He's just kind of about to say something. So we want to... What do we want to do? We want to imagine he's anxious to speak to Red. We want to imagine he's nervous. So we want to imagine him... We want some words ending in ing to describe um, him cheering himself on to talk to her. So he's plucking up the courage. There's my first ing word. He's plucking up the courage. Plucking up the courage. Perhaps he is um, mustering uh, bravery in order to speak to her. Mustering. If you muster something, it's you're you're gathering gathering strength almost. You're mustering the strength to be able to speak to her. Mustering. Perhaps you are summoning the courage it would take to talk to her. Perhaps that is what Blue is up to. Summoning. Remember, he's, we're thinking that he's a bit shy and a bit anxious, so he's really trying to, yeah, get the feelings, like, oh, go on, Blue, say something. He's really trying to pick up, pluck up the courage. He's um, building up his bravery so that he can speak to her. He's building it. He's... he's Daring himself to say something. He's thinking, oh, go on, Blue, I dare you, say something. Daring. He's struggling, preparing, gathering, perhaps. Gathering the bravery it takes. Struggling, preparing. Um, gathering, perhaps. I don't know if I can squeeze gathering here. Gathering. So we're thinking about anxious old blue trying to pluck up the courage to speak to her. So write your favourite two or three down so you have some ideas. You might need to pause the video here and just get them written down. I'm going to change colour now to blue. And we're going to write on this side our first sentence. So using one of my ING words, um, plucking up the courage or struggling to find the words maybe he's like oh, 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 struggling to find the words perhaps he's um summoning all the bravery inside him he's going to go to attempt to talk to her so i'm going to choose plucking but you might choose one of the others you might choose mustering all the courage he had then we're gonna go so plucking up the courage to speak Plucking up the courage. Courage is a funny word, it's spelled C-O-U-R-A-G. Plucking up the courage to speak. Comma. Plucking up the courage to speak. Yours might say, <gasps> mustering all the bravery he could to say something. Comma. And then... How do, when someone's a bit nervous, someone's a bit anxious, how, we could say, he said, but that would be a bit rubbish. Thinking about when someone is anxious or, or nervous, they, they might 
stutter, they might, um, um, uh, hello, they might stutter, they might um, stammer, they might um, judder, perhaps. So I'm going to choose, plucking out the courage to speak, he's stuttered, he's stuttered. Now, here comes his speech, so what piece of punctuation do we need? Starting the speech, we open it with inverted commas. What's he gonna say to her? You might decide he's gonna say, hello, or do, 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 do you want, thinking about those questions that we came up with yesterday, I'm going to go with, do, 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 do you want, perhaps he's gonna say, do you want to be my friend? Um, so he's going to stutter or stammer because he's nervous. So I'm gonna repeat that word, do. You might repeat the word hi, 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 or that letter, the H sound. Do, do, do. I'm going to do it three times. Do you want... Now, if you remember from the video, it's almost as if he, he plucks up the courage and then they're separated. He spends all that time kind of getting himself G'd up to speak to her and then all of a sudden they're torn apart. So I'm going to leave that sentence unfinished with an ellipsis. Remember what that is? Dot, 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 to show that the sentence is unfinished. But I still have to remember to do something here. Close my inverted commas, he's finished speaking. Do, do you want, ah, and it was going to be a question, so I need to make sure I put my question mark in there, inside the inverted commas. Do, do, do you want, I bet she's gone. He's gone. And there we have it. There's our first sentence. Pause the video and get yours done. Yours might say, um, preparing himself to speak, he juddered. Hi, 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 my name is ellipsis, close inverted commas. Yours might say, struggling to find the words, he eventually Stammered. Excuse. Oh, and he didn't get to finish. Ellipsis, close the inverted commas. It's up to you. Can't wait to see what you're imagining that he says. Pause the video and get that done. Then join me when you're ready for the next part. So, the next part, we're looking for two things. We're going to imagine that that is the point that they've been pulled apart. So, How can we describe when someone has gone to say something but didn't get to finish? Perhaps we would say words hanging in the air. They were left hanging. So words hanging. Perhaps you would say um, words unfinished, uh, hanging in the air perhaps. I'm going to choose to put air hanging in the air. Perhaps the words were, um, perhaps you would say that Blue's voice trailed off. If your voice trails off, you kind of just, oh, okay, I won't finish what I'm going to say. You just, you trail off, um, voice trailed off. Um, perhaps he was so nervous he stammered to a standstill. Um, any more? Let's see. Um, <laughs> perhaps he was so nervous he swallowed the end of his questions. You might say that. Swallowed the end of his question. Okay. All words to describe exactly what happened there. He just didn't get to finish what he wanted to say. Okay. Then... We want to imagine, like we saw in the video, that they have been torn apart and we need verbs to, better verbs than torn. So torn apart is a good start. Can you think of any more? Better words than torn. Perhaps they were, hmm, 
ripped apart is a good one. I'm sure many of you would have written that one down, ripped apart. As I'm writing, get your ideas down too. Remember, you need at least two in each box. Ripped apart, were they? Um, snatched or wrenched apart is always powerful. Snatched or wrenched. You could have pulled, maybe, pulled apart or split apart. Okay, two ideas in each box at least, and then moving on to this side. So, let's see, I'm going to choose one of these ideas to describe what happened here. So, um, you could say Blue's voice trailed off, or um, Blue stammered to a standstill, imagining that he, do, do, do you want, oh, okay. Um, so Blue was so nervous he swallowed the end of his question, maybe. I'm going to choose words hung in the air. Capital letter. Words hung in the air. Oh, words hung in the air or words hung unfinished in the air, perhaps. Words hung unfinished. In the air, unfinished. In the air. As I crawl. Twist of fate. hung unfinished in the air as a cruel twist of fate here comes our verb our precise verb split them apart ripped them from each other um, wrenched them separate um, I'm going to choose ripped ripped her away from him so we're talking from Blue's point of view, we're describing the situation. Words hung unfinished in the air as a cruel twist of fate. Some of you might be wondering, cruel twist of fate, what does that mean? Something out of their control separated them, okay? It was a cruel twist of fate. It's just the way the world works sometimes, unfortunately. Something happened that they had no control over and it was just so unfortunate. We call it a twist of fate. Okay, it was a cruel twist of fate that schools had to shut in January, okay, to use it in another context. So, words hung unfinished in the air as a cruel twist of fate ripped her away from him. You might decide that you're going to write Blue's, word, uh, Blue's voice trailed off as a cruel twist of fate pulled them apart or... Um, Blue stammered to a standstill as a cruel twist of fate tore them apart from one another or wrenched them separate, okay? You can change these two parts of this sentence and really make it your own. Just make sure you include a cruel twist of fate, okay? Pause it while you get that done and then we'll move on to the last phase of the paragraph. Right. Preposition. Can you remember what a preposition is? Pause the video and just take 30 seconds to remember. Can you name an example of a preposition? Did you remember? So you should have remembered that preposition is the location of a an object. So is um is the is the pen next to the computer? Is the board on the table? Is the bag under the table where is something those words that show you where something is miss palmer's board was on the table or on top of um the clock was above the door in the classroom okay so prepositional phrase we're going to use it to describe 
how where the red umbrella was. Do you remember in the video that Blue was looking back, looking back to see where the red umbrella was? And we're going to choose three prepositions to describe where she was. So I'm going to use green this time. Let's see if without my help, you can get down three prepositions of your own. Pause the video and do it now. Okay, I've got four down so far. I'm really, really, I'll be really interested to see which ones you came up with. So I've got beneath, above, next to, behind. Um, perhaps we could have underneath, across, another one. Okay, see if you can get down a few and we're going to describe where red umbrella is taken to. So moving on to this side. So he's watching her in the distance, just being taken further and further away from him. So one minute, one minute, she was thinking back to the video. Where was she? Here comes the preposition. One minute she was next to the coffee shop, thinking of things that one might find in New York, perhaps a coffee shop. One minute she was next to the coffee shop. You don't have to choose coffee shop if you don't want to. You might say next to the park or next to the hotel or somewhere next to the fire hydrant. I don't know, it's up to you. One minute she was next to the coffee shop. Here comes one of our... Um, Let's see, one minute she was next to the coffee shop, then she was by the subway, so what they call their underground trains, comma, then she was, oh, then she was by the subway. And finally, Notice that the preposition in that sentence, then she was by the subway, and finally, he saw her disappear into the distance. I wonder if you can see this down here. Sorry if you can't. He saw her disappear into the distance. Gosh, I struggled to fit it all on then. Okay, so let's read that last sentence. One minute she was next to the coffee shop. There's my conjunction. Where was she next to? You might choose. Um, one minute she was underneath the bridge. Then she was by the cinema, maybe. By the coffee shop, by the theatre, by, the, um, by the subway I've chosen. And finally, he saw her disappear into the distance. You might cho choose to write. And then finally, he watched her fade into the blackness, maybe. You might not choose saw her in the distance. You might choose a different one. So I'm just going to read that all the way through. And I'm going to tick off my success criteria as I go through. Shall I use black? Yes, I shall. Dialogue. Plucking up the courage to speak, he stuttered. Do, do, do you want? There's no dialogue. Words hung unfinished in the air as a cruel twist of fate ripped her away from him. Where's my precise verb? Here it is. Precise verb. Are you going to use ripped or are you going to use a different one? Let's see. One minute she was next to the coffee shop. Then she was by the subway. And finally he saw her disappear into the distance. Notice how I've used these words one minute, then finally, similarly to that instruction text that we wrote, those, what are they called? The words, the word escapes me. 
adverbs. <laughs> One minute, then finally she disappeared into the distance. As I said, you might say she faded into the darkness. Okay, really pull on, pull on the reader's heartstrings here. He was just getting the courage. He was just, just preparing the bravery it took to speak to her and then boom, they were ripped apart, okay? Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Not an easy write today, so if you do need to rewind this video and rewatch any of the parts of the paragraph, then please do. And I can't wait to see what you come up with, okay? Well done, guys.